Let's talk about Kubernetes deployments and services, starting with this diagram. So we have pods with labels of app A and app B, and these shapes represent running instances of containers in Kubernetes. Each pod has a unique IP address. For example, the pods labeled app A have IP addresses of 10.10.10.1, .10 .10 .2, 0.3, and 0.5. And another pod labeled app B has the IP address of 10.10.10.4. .10 the deployment object in the top right manages the lifecycle of your application and ensures that a specified number of pods are running. It's responsible for creating a replica set and ensuring that the number of pods specified by the deployment is available. So what is a replica set? Well, a replica set ensures that a certain number of pod replicas, in this case for the app A pods, are running at any given time. And in this example, it maintains three replicas of app A with these IP addresses. What is the service, or SVC? The service, labeled SVC with IP of 1.1.1.1, acts as a load balancer for the app A pods. It routes requests to any of the available pods based on the selector criteria of app equals A and ensures traffic distribution across multiple pods of the same application. What is the selector? The dashed line labeled selector app equals A indicates that the service selects all pods with the label app equals A. This label is used to filter which pods the service should route traffic to. And labels app A and app B are used to organize and select Kubernetes objects. In this case, the service uses the label app equals A to target only the app A pods. So this pod and these three replicas. So in summary, this diagram shows how a Kubernetes deployment manages multiple pod replicas of an application app A and how a replica set ensures a consistent number of replicas and how a service routes traffic to these pods using this label selector. So what is a Kubernetes deployment? A deployment is a resource that defines how an application or set of pods should be deployed and managed over time. It handles the creation, scaling, and updating of pods, ensuring that the desired number of replicas or copies of the application are running and that any updates or changes to the application are applied in a controlled manner. So there's many key features of deployments. First, declarative updates. You specify the desired state of your application, for example, three replicas of a web server, and Kubernetes will ensure the system matches the state. Secondly, rolling updates. Deployments allow you to update your application incrementally. For example, when deploying a new version of the application, it can replace old pods with new ones, one at a time to avoid downtime. It also provides self-healing, so if a pod crashes or becomes unhealthy, the deployment ensures a new one is created to replace it. It also provides scaling. You can easily scale your application by increasing or decreasing the number of replicas or pods in the deployment. And it also provides rollback. So deployments track the history of changes made to the application, and if an update goes wrong, you can roll back to a previous version. Now let's take a look at a sample deployment.yaml file. Here we have the API version, and this specifies the API version of Kubernetes resources to use. So apps slash v1 is the version for managing stateful sets daemon sets, and deployments in Kubernetes. Kind defines the type of Kubernetes resource. Here it's a deployment, which is used to create and manage replica sets and pods. We also have the metadata. So the name is the name of the deployment, and it has to be unique within the namespace. 
There's also the labels field. These are key value pairs that help in organizing and selecting resources. So here the label app, my app, is used to identify and associate resources like services and pods with this app. Next, we have the spec. So replicas specifies the number of pod replicas to run. And this ensures Kubernetes always has three instances of your application running. Next, we have selector. And this defines how the deployment finds the pods it manages. In this case, it looks for pods with the label of app, my app. And now we have the template section. So this section defines how to create pods when the deployment creates them. And it has its own metadata and spec. So first metadata. This section contains labels that are assigned to the pod created by this deployment. So the label will be app my app. And the spec defines the, the specifications of the container that will run within the pod. So within containers, this is a list of container definitions. And each pod can have multiple containers, but in majority of cases, you'll use a single container. So the name is the name of the container. The image is the Docker image used for this container. In this example, my app image 1.0 refers to the 1.0 version of your application image stored in some container registry. And the ports defines the ports the container will expose. So here the container is exposing port 8080, which is useful if this is a web service or API running inside the container. Now let's go back and talk about a Kubernetes service. So a service in Kubernetes is a Kubernetes resource that provides a stable network endpoint, so a DNS name and IP for accessing a set of pods. Since pods in Kubernetes are ephemeral and can be created, deleted, or moved at any time, a service decouples the clients from directly accessing individual pods by providing a consistent way to route traffic to the appropriate pods. So what are some key features of services? First is a load balancing. Services will distribute traffic evenly across the pods that match its selector, in this case, app equals A, ensuring no single pod is overwhelmed. Secondly, stable IP address or DNS. Each service gets its own stable IP address and DNS name, which abstracts away the dynamic nature of pods. Pods can come and go, they're ephemeral, but the service remains the same. There's different types of services. I'll briefly provide an overview. So cluster IP is the default service type, and this exposes the service within the cluster. Pods inside the cluster can access the service, but it's not accessible from outside of the cluster. Node port exposes the service on a static port on each node in the cluster, making it accessible from outside of the cluster via node IP followed by node port. Load balancer. This automatically provisions an external load balancer, which is cloud provider dependent, that forwards traffic's traffic to the pods. And the fourth type of service is external name. And this maps a service to an external DNS name, allowing the service to refer to an external resource. Now let's take a look at the YAML file for a service. So here I've pasted a snippet of a service YAML. And we can see that the API version is set to v1, as this service resource is part of the Kubernetes core API. Kind, in this case, defines the resource type, and here it's a service, which is used to expose a set of pod instances over the network, either internally to the cluster or externally. There's also a metadata field, and within it, the name field, which is the name of the service resource. This will be how Kubernetes internally refers to this service. There's also the labels field, and this is the key value pairs to organize and select resources. So this label can help match services with specific deployments and pods, just like with the deployment. And now there's also the spec field. 
So within selector, this field defines which pods the service should forward traffic to. It uses labels to identify pods. And in this case, any pod that has the label of my app will be targeted by this service. Next, we have ports. This section defines the network ports. For the protocol, it specifies the protocol, usually TCP or UDP. And by default, it's going to be TCP if unspecified. The port, this is the port, get, this is the port on which the service is exposed externally. And in this example, the service is exposed on port 80, which is the standard HTTP port. The target port here is the port on the container where the traffic is routed. So here it's targeting port 8080 inside the container, which matches the container's exposed port in the deployment. Now we also have the type. So this specifies how the service will be exposed. In this case, we have load balancer. So this service type exposes the service externally using a cloud provider's load balancer, for example, AWS or GCP. And there's other types, for example, cluster IP, which is the default, and it makes the service accessible only within the cluster. And there's also node port, which exposes the service on each node's IP at a static port. And when I said that this port 8080 matches the container's exposed port in the deployment, I was referring to the 8080 uh, container port value here, which means that the deployment exposes this port, which would be useful for a web service, for example. 